Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I'm going to show a little bit of a failed experiment. It's not the dye type that was a fail, it was that I was trying to test uh, some other parameters and I just did not set it up correctly. So we create some beautiful yarn using a type of food coloring I have not used very often, but the other experiment that you'll learn more about in a moment didn't really pan out, so it's something I'm going to have to revisit with some tweaks at a later date. So while I am calling this a fail, it's not a fail in terms of the yarn, it's just a fail in that I did not execute <laughs> the experiment itself very well. But I still love the yarn that we created. But now, let's go get into the video. Today, we are gonna take another look at asymmetric heat and the difference that this can make on our yarn as we are dyeing it. I'm going to be using a full-size catering steam pan that is across two burners on my stovetop. But this time, one burner is big and the other burner is small. Now, not that I'm going to be using the small burner at all, but the big one is the one that will be on today, so the one right here. The first time I tried this, I went for something more tonal, which it did have an effect, although it was very, very subtle. So today we are going to try a powder based technique and see what we can see. And we will be dyeing 100 grams of Knit Pick Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino. I have not pre-soaked the yarn yet. I just added four cups of plain tap water. Um, and so since this yarn was not yet wet, I'm now sort of trying to saturate it a little bit and huh, it looks like one skein can hold close to four cups of water. So I'm going to add four more. So the total water we're adding is eight cups and let's go ahead and add just one tablespoon of white vinegar. This is enough vinegar to help some colors start to strike and then maybe others won't quite yet. So I'm gonna start our technique uh, shortly. I think that I want to do it just maybe 30 seconds or something after turning on the heat. I did find that the heat traveled fairly quickly. So we're gonna work fast. And I'll talk about the dye we're going to use in a moment. But if you'd like to learn more about the tools and equipment I use in my videos, I do have the affiliate links down in the video description. And while you're at it, make sure you're subscribed to the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel because we have a lot of fun here. I am going to turn on the front burner, but to like a medium low, which is still giving us a big area with flame, but it's not the power boil that might spread even more. So today, we are gonna use some Hawaiian Punch Singles to dye the yarn. This is some sugar-free drink beverage mix. Maybe we'll grab some Kool-Aid as well, but uh, we'll start with these little packets. I am only waiting to start to see some steam come up from the front or some movement. Can you see it? Little hints of bubbles. Okay, we're seeing a little bit of heat. I'm gonna come in with this powder and I am speckling it on to our yarn. And you can see that it's spreading. We're not the lowest of immersion and I'm doing a similar amount down here where it is cooler. And oddly, well maybe that's more above the surface. So it's like, that is looking a little more like speckly speckle than what I'm seeing down here where I feel like I'm seeing more spread. So that is intriguing. Oh, that was a little bit heavy. Probably could have had less water um, that maybe would have helped. I may have messed this up already. Oh well. I opened up all three packets. I've only used one so far. So this is not 
what I was expecting. I maybe added the color heavier down there. Like, I'm seeing a lot more dark color down there. Let's go in the middle. Oh, that's heavier. I think I completely messed this up. <laughs> I think I utterly and completely messed this up. Um, I mean, I'm seeing a difference from down here where we're bubbling to down there, but like, I, I should have added it in thinner lines. So, what we're gonna do now, I guess is let this sit for, gosh, let's let it sit for 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and see what there is to see. Because, and well here, there's a chance. There's a chance that I'm seeing more pink here because the speckles are striking and then only a little bit is spreading. And this looks deeper and we'll see more of that. Except for the part where it's sticking out, we'll see something different. I don't know, I don't know. But we'll come back in 15 minutes. But while we're waiting, clearly this is bubbling down here. Okay, that end, which I did just touch, this end does still feel cold. So there is definitely hot and cold all in one pan right now still. I've already decided that I'm gonna call this video a fail, mainly because I really shouldn't have just added the color all over. I intended to add like strips of powder or something. And then I started speckling and then I was like, oh, I should just do more. And I went heavier and heavier. And it's hard to say if like, I have, I think I added a lot more dye down there. So it's hard to say. I can tell you a few things. Down at the hot end, we've got some sharp, sharp, sharp speckles. There are some, still some speckles down at the cooler end, but they are more spread out. I'm not sure how well you can see this because some of them do look rather sharp. I mean, you're like, oh, I see speckles, but they're not as tiny as some of the ones that we see here in the hot section. Not the best comparisons here, I know, I know. It, it could be better. <laughs> so I can say at this point, this side is obviously warm. That end right there is still cool. I'm gonna go ahead and move it and see. Yeah, I think I just added way too much down there. Um, let's flip it and see if I immediately notice anything. So now this was our hot end down there, and over here was our cool. So I see more, potentially more spread, but I could have added more color. It is hard to say for sure. And I am disappointed with myself, mainly because it was something that, I, I did a technique that was really hard to control. I think that if I revisit this again, which I probably will, but if I revisit this again, what I should do is instead of trying to use a powder like this, I should take a dye stock and add lines. Add lines across, going down, and then we can see if those lines are behaving differently. That will show us if it stays sharp or if it sort of spreads a little more. And that'll be less variable on, did the powder hit water first or yarn first? And how is that behaving? So I think that that's how I will proceed in the future. But for now, let's use the rest of this Hawaiian punch. I must have, I thought I'd never used it before, but this says eight packets and I only have three. So I must have used it. <laughs> Okay, that's the one I emptied. So to dye yarn with food coloring, which includes Hawaiian punch and Kool-Aid and any kind of food coloring you can get your hands on, you need a few main components. You need to have uh, your artificial food coloring, which this is probably Red 40. Yes, yes, these packets contain Red 40 and Blue 1. You need acid, which in the mix we have the citric acid and I also added vinegar. And then the final thing we need is heat. 
But the most important thing is actually the yarn that we are using. So the yarn we're using today is 100% superwash merino. You want a protein-based yarn like wool, alpaca works, silk, um, protein fibers like that are what you really want. What you do not want are synthetics like acrylic and polyester or plant-based fibers like cotton, linen, and things like that. So. Yeah, you can get gorgeous, gorgeous colors with food coloring like I've showed here. And so, actually, maybe instead of calling it fail, I should just call this dying with Hawaiian uh, punch singles, uh, a failed experiment. Uh, maybe that's a better title for today. But I think we're creating a really fun yarn. It just isn't as informative as I was hoping. One nice thing about these packets is that my hands aren't getting dirty. Uh, so I am personally, in general, comfortable using food coloring to dye yarn using my kitchen pots and pans. Right here, I'm using a dedicated dye pot that I only use for dyeing yarn and is never used in the preparation of food. And since I'm using this, then I wouldn't go put this yarn in a cooking pot or pan. But I am personally comfortable using cooking dishes uh, with food coloring. There's a lot of pigment in these three packets. Like, a lot of pigment. Especially because these packets are supposed to um, be for a single drink mix. And I'm inclined to think that if I just used one packet of cherry Kool-Aid all over, maybe it wouldn't even be this pigmented. I don't know. All I know is that we've got a fun, splotchy, tonal yarn, which is beautiful. <laughs> uh, even if I was trying to do something else and that didn't quite work out, I am gonna add, go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar. It's not necessary because there's enough acid in those packets for the color to absorb to our yarn, but why not? Oh, and I'll go ahead and turn on that rear burner as well. So, <laughs> I'm gonna let this heat for another 15 minutes and then we'll come back. All right, the time is up. I'm going to turn off the heat and all of the color is in our yarn, which is beautiful, which is beautiful. Um, so I'm now gonna let the yarn cool so we can go wash it. Let's wash our Hawaiian punch yarn only three servings that we use. It has a bit of a scent, but it's not as strong as, say, when I use the liquid Kool-Aid. I'm going to add some dish soap. There is definitely stuff in here that is not just food coloring and citric acid, so I will want to wash this a few more times than, say, I might wash a yarn that was just dyed with liquid food coloring. But we're not seeing any bleeding, even with the addition of soap. So I will be rinsing this a handful more times. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer to remove the excess water and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. It is a beautiful sort of berry pink with deeper berryish red speckles on it. I did out the powder really, really thickly, so we've got some heavy speckles down there and then some areas where that speckling is even heavier. We may not have been able to form any conclusions about our asymmetric heat because I really just did not add the powder evenly, but we did create a beautiful yarn with these, what, Hawaiian punch singles. So. It may be a flop in terms of the experiment I was trying to do and a fail there, but it's an absolute win for the colorway. I am not planning on testing every single brand of powdered drink mix, but if you want to use one of those to try to dye yarn, the things that you want to look for are really the presence of artificial food coloring. Specifically, you're looking for blue 1, red 40, yellow 5, or yellow 6. Red 3 really isn't in drink mixes, so... You might see it, but I doubt it. There probably would be citric acid, but that's not absolutely necessary. You could add your own citric acid in or just use vinegar in with your yarn. So those are things to look out for. But 
If you do want to speckle with food coloring, I recommend making your own sprinkles. I have a few tutorials on this and the results from that are cheaper and you have more ability to customize color because drink mixes are overwhelmingly red and pink. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please double check that you're subscribed. I love to share my first time trying different projects. Sometimes they are huge wins, sometimes they are flops. But this is what happens when you come along with me on the journey and see how my projects evolve and shift along the way. And I think we have a lot of fun. So smash that bell icon to make sure your notifications are on and you never miss a new video. If you love the year and I die and want to bring some home with you, I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. You can find a link to it down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching everyone.